good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I thought you'd like a treat. I thought you'd like to see the drive home. Ah. Angry, what are you doing going home at five to three, I hear you say. Well, I only work the morning. And then uh, me and Lou reconciled the last two months of the bank account for my financial year, which ends on 30th of September. So it's not really until the end of October that we can be certain that we've got all the, the bills in for September, you know. So by about the end of October, we can start to get some draft figures out and see how well we've done. I'm pleased to say that I can rely on the same old CODs that the Chancellor came up with yesterday when he read the autumn statement that well, I've had a strong rebound this year and that uh, apart from the problem with a few supply shortages I've had, a, I've had a year of exceptional growth basically because last year was such an exceptionally shit year so I think uh, we turned over 138 last year, we've turned over about 185 this year. Which is nothing, I know, it's nothing. But single-handed private dentist is just pathetic. But, I don't, it's my, my surgery is run on a pro bono basis. It's not, I don't uh, draw any money from it really. So, I've got my NHS pension coming in. I'll just do it to get me out of the house and uh, keep the two nurses in the job. Keep your mind active, you know, as you get older, as you get into your 60s, I'll keep your, keep your mind active. Anyway, so we've made a profit of, um, well, you see, this is the thing. See, I don't really know what our profit is, because, I mean, this is really, really draft figures. But on paper, at the moment, it's a profit of about 38. But the trouble is that um, we, we, we were in a cash, we had a very, very positive cash flow. Uh, situation last year or this my last financial year and so as a result I was able to um, buy quite a bit of crypto and crypto counts as a digital good so let's say let's say that you let's say you've got t at the end of the month you've got ten thousand pounds in your account and you don't really want to and you want to preserve its purchasing power so you don't really want to keep it in cash because cash is being debauched by old Sonny Eat Out to help out. What's his name? And um, so what you do is you, you, you transfer it onto Coinbase and you buy 10 grand's worth of cryptocurrency, right? Doesn't matter what. So, sorry, I. Right, I am going to lubricate this clutch pedal today. I promise you. I'm sorry about all the squeaking and everything. I might, I might go the fast way home so that we don't do some. Right, there's just as much clutch changing on the fast way as there is on the slow way. Ah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, so what you do is you put ten thousand pounds in the coin base, right? And you buy crypto with it, and the government says, ah, oh, well, that's not money. You can't count that as money, that's a digital good. That's a, that's a thing. So you're right, okay, I've bought a thing with it. The only question is, is it tax deductible, this thing that I've bought? So, and I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be, because it's been bought with the company money through a company account on, on this exchange and therefore it's um, you know and, it, and it's only my, uh, my my opinion is that it's whole, well it doesn't have to be an opinion but it is wholly and exclusively uh, employed uh, money that's been wholly exclusively employed buying this um, it doesn't have to be necessarily because it's up to me to decide what's necessary I've decided it's necessary for my dental surgery to hold its spare cash in Bitcoin or whatever and um, the, the only question is whether or not that's tax deductible so if it's 
if it's not tax deductible, in other words, if they decide to treat it as though I just transferred ten thousand pounds to a deposit account, and that and that ten thousand pounds still forms part of my profits, then fair enough. You know, I'll just change it back. But if um, if they take the attitude that it's uh, you know it's a good and you have to pay capital gains tax on it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and I decide to buy some, then I don't see why it shouldn't be tax deductible, providing that I you know. Anyway, that's an argument to come. But the point is that the, for the purposes of the job, it's, it's worked as intended in that the, um, it's preserved the purchasing power of the, my um, uh, surplus cash uh, to the extent that it's, it's um, well, let's just say it's done very well. Uh, preserving the purchasing power of my cash. <laughs> so, so, um, but um, I think last year we made a profit of about eighteen thousand, and I think this year we're on target to be uh, make a profit of about thirty-eight, unless I can get them to allow this cryptocurrency purchase against my taxable profits, in which case we made a loss. So, um, oh dear, what a shame. Poor old Sun Hill Fish Stick, whatever his name is. Not going to get any corporation tax, is he? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So, what we did today, well this week really, is a bit of a laugh. We, um, we drew up a list of, uh, but we've got, I've got this patient who came in and spent the whole appointment telling me that fluoride is poisonous. An amalgam is poisonous, and as a result, um, and she, how she, last time she had a root treatment, she ended up needing to have the tooth out, and it's always a big disaster, and she was certain it's all going to happen again. And we overfilled the platelet root of this tooth, just giving you the shortened version, um, which, and so she said she had a mild discomfort from it, which I don't think is from the root filling, but she decided, you know, because this was the, probably the second time in her life that a dentist has done this to her plus um, she's a conspiracy theorist that um, uh, this is um, the dental profession was conspiring to make her cause her pain and cause her to lose all her teeth so anyway of course dental law partnership lost no time in agreeing with her and so um, I'm doing sued for about £8,000 although the actual um the only thing that's indefensible is that we failed to spot some decay in a tooth, which, which was the one we later root filled. And there's some debate about whether or not she may or may not have needed the root filling if we'd brought it up at the time. Personally, I think she probably she probably would have done anyway. But um, anyway, that's all with the, the barristers now, so we'll see what happens. I'm sure they're negotiating a settlement. But anyway, we... What I did was I sat down with the girls and they said, look, I'm fed up. I've been working for 40 years, treating these lunatics, come in and sort of debating the x-rays are poisonous and things like that. And so I said, I'm not going to take anyone else on. If anyone else comes in and starts acting like a retard, then I'm just going to say, look, I'm sorry, I don't think I can help you. Because not only will it improve my mental health and that of the staff, but it will also cut down on the chances of us being sued for £8,000 because we missed, a, we missed a bit of decay on x-ray for, for the best part of four months or something. So, although we did eventually, obviously, treat the tooth. So, we drew up a list of things that uh, are absolute no-nos, all right? And if you're thinking of coming to see me and you're listening to this podcast, then listen hard. Because saying any one, but certainly more than one, i.e. two, of these things is going to mean that you're going to get very politely told that I'm sorry we can't help you. So the, and the first one is, and these questions are going to be asked, you know, they're, they're not in any particular order. Anyone who comes in and says that fluoride is poisonous and that fluoride in the water is uh, a government conspiracy to... Uh, mind control the population is not going to be seen by me okay 
I'm, I'm not going to... I mean, I used to have long debates with people about this. And now I'm not even going to debate it. I used to tell them that if it's good enough for the World Health Organization and the Department of Health, then it was good enough for me. But, but that's not good enough for them. So they know better than the World Health Organization. And so there's no point debating it, right? Because they're conspiracy theorists. And they, the, the conspiracy is that someone's trying to poison them with fluoride or beam, beam thoughts into their head or something. Anyway, um, the second one is anyone who comes in and just gives, starts off by telling me that their previous dentist made a right cock up of their teeth. And not just their previous dentist, but the dentist before that and every other dentist that, that they've ever been to see. They have all haven't had a clue what they were doing should have been struck off blah 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 but not i'm hoping that you know you'll you'll be able to fix me up so that's another thing that's going to be a that's going to be a firm no right because you're not i mean you think the um the ego your ego will tell you that you can succeed where everyone else has failed but the fact of the matter is that you will fail because the common the problem is the patient not the patient's teeth or your skill, or the other dentist's skill. In fact, they'll be they'll be laughing at you. You know, if they ever found out that you've taken this person on, they'll be going, oh, 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 I don't believe. I don't believe that they've taken on Mrs. So-and-so. So, number three. There's quite a few of these, so I'm going to have to push on. No, number three. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I've come here because I want... Um, not a second opinion, but I want another quote for some work because I've had a quote and it's it was expensive and I was hoping that you could do it for less that's what it boils down to right so and it's typically something like a molar root treatment or something they've had a quote for 1200 quid or something and uh, and so they shop around and that's fine I mean you know which said to the patients that they should shop around and get various quotes and stuff like that but I'm not I'm not in the business of... It's not that I don't want to undercut other dentists either. It's just that any patient who uh, buys on the basis of price and price alone is not really going to... It's not going to go well. It's not going to end well. Do you know what I mean? Any patient that doesn't care what they have done in their mouth, as long as it's cheap, done as cheaply as possible, with no regard to the amount of time taken or the quality of the materials or the laboratory work, that is, that is not the sort of patient that we, we deal with. So that's going to be a firm no on that basis, okay? Um, anyone who says that uh, a previous dental treatment has made their problems worse, which is the uh, sort, of, sort of related to the, perhaps the dentist didn't do their job properly, but someone who says, like, you know, uh, uh, I had a reline. I had a reline, but after the reline, my denture was ten times worse. I couldn't keep it in; it kept falling out. Uh, and you realise that this patient's got no coping skills at all, and that they're going to they're, they're going to blame the dentistry for any problems that they have um, with the dentistry. So again, that's 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 a no. Um, mercury. It's pretty similar to the fluoride argument. Um, not that we do mercury fillings, we don't do mercury fillings, but, and we, we take out all mercury fillings under rubber dam. So I can't, I mean, we literally, we cannot um, probably do much more other than sort of fart about with chelating agents and stuff like the, uh, the you know, the guys who set themselves up as the big, the big anti-mercury, anti-Yorbian poison, anti-mercury type dentist which I don't you don't really come across them quite so much now certainly not in Ramsgate you don't but I mean someone who's um, someone who said that you know they come to you they've had half their fillings out like I have done and had half of them white and then they run out of money so they're just saving up to have the other half out or you know used to get people with cystic fibrosis multiple sclerosis come in rather and say that uh They've heard that taking all your silver fillings out is a cure for multiple sclerosis. Um, and then, you know, 
And the temptation is to say, well, you know, like I've said in the past, uh, why not? Why not me? If I don't do it, some other bugger's going to get paid to do it. Why not me? And the answer is because you're dealing with someone whose uh, core beliefs and values are skewed, you know, and you're playing along with that. As soon as they say, I think having my silver fillings out will cure my multiple sclerosis or make it better, and you say, yeah, all right, okay, fair enough, then what you're doing is you're sort of tacitly agreeing with the diagnosis. So, what else have we got on my list? Oh. I've been referred to a specialist for the for the treatment I want from you. So that's another. Um, that, that's not so much going to you for something that's cheaper, but um, not wanting to be referred to a specialist. A on the grounds of cost, and B on the grounds of uh, possibly it's going to take a long time, multiple visits, long visits, uh, but mainly the cost trying to get something done and again this is typically an endodontist uh, and what they'll do is they'll tell you you know you'll say you need a root treatment and they'll sort of they go oh really oh yes okay all right can you let me know how much it'll be and then um, you find out afterwards that in fact they have actually seen when 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 they've had the checkup and you've told them you've given them the sort of the verbal diagnosis they then are sitting at the desk on the way out and they say oh yes Yes, it's funny you should say that because that's like, I went to see a dentist the week before last and that's exactly what he said. So, and they think that you're pleased about this, you know, that you're going to be pleased that you've, uh, they're like, you know, oh, this is a little um, treasure hunt in my mouth and well done, you found the treasure, you found the, you found the same thing. And you're, but you're like, uh, you know, and they said, they said oh, I need to have a root treatment done, but... They told me I don't need, need to go and see a specialist. Now, it's quite true that if you are working in a large practice and, they, and you have a visiting endodontist, it may be that you are told to send every root treatment to the endodontist. It doesn't have to be a specialist job. So it may be that I will say that I can do something that they've been referred to a specialist for. It doesn't mean I'm a specialist. It just means I'm the only bugger here. So if anyone needs a root treatment it's me that has to do it well unless it is obviously a super specialist job in which case then then I would refer it but they so so I, I do have some sympathy with them because that's like in Italy that is a very common way of working what happens is you have a large clinic you have 15 dentists there two one or two of them do all the dentures uh, one or two of them do all the veneers one or two of them do all the crowns and bridges, and then you have uh, three or four endodontists, etc., etc., and uh, and and so for does night genius, whatever. And you go and see whoever's the right person for the job. But um, I'm not, you know, I don't encourage people who have been referred for specialist treatment to come and see me in the hope that I will put my neck on the block and do what another dentist has referred them. Because as soon as they're referred for a specialist treatment, then basically what you're, the GDC is gonna say no, they're gonna have no sympathy with you if anything, if the slightest thing should go wrong, right? They'll say, Mr. Watson, what, what were you thinking of doing? You're not on the specialist list for endodontics and you were trying to do a case that you knew had been referred for specialist treatment and you said, no, I'll have a go, you know, give us a, give us a go at that then, I'll have a go, I don't mind. I'll have a bash, you know. So, <laughs> you know. So no, if you're if you've been referred for specialist treatment, if you don't need it, and it's just on you've know, been referred on financial grounds, I um, feel sorry for you. But that's because you went to see a practice where that's how they work, and and that's how they work. Okay. So that and and it's not only that; it's that they tell you afterwards. You know, it's not if they come in and if they said if they were honest up front and said, I went to see a dentist two weeks ago. They told me I probably need to go and see a specialist for this root treatment. I wanted you to have a look at it and see if you could do it. Then I'd be more sympathetic. But if they explain it to you on the way out, then that is it. That is the way out, and they're not they're, they're, they're not coming back the way in. Anybody who wants treatment that is not clini strictly clinically necessary. Now you might say, well, yeah, of course. But in fact, this applies more to the hygienist. Um, you get patients who say, oh, I want to see the hygienist. 
and you're like, well, you don't need to see the hygienist. But they're like, yeah, but I'd still like to see her, you know? Or uh, you're, you say, well, I can I can do your hygiene because you only need two teeth descaled, and in those cases, we mostly do it free of charge. But, um, but, uh, and they say, no, no, no. I want to see the hygienist. I haven't seen the hygienist for three months. And the reason is that a lot of these people, they are offloading the uh, job of caring for their teeth onto the hygienist specifically. So you can shout, you can, you can tell these people to use disclosing tablets until you're blue in the face. Never mind about them being blue in the face. And <clears throat> they'll totally ignore you. They'll ignore all your advice about the brushing uh, on the basis that once every three months they get their teeth cleaned by the hygienist and the other 361 days of the year where they're not where they don't see the hygienist then they, they just can't be asked. And if they can't be asked then neither can we so <coughs> our attitude is you brush your own teeth and we tell you if you need to see the hygienist. And that's mainly to remove calculus and it only because you can't. So um, refusing x-rays on the ground of risk Treatment that's dropped as clinically necessary includes composite veneers and stuff like that on the grounds of um, cosmetics. Um, x-rays, patients come in and say, you know, you say you need x-rays, routine x-rays. I'd rather not, you know. Now we don't charge for x-rays because we don't, that rules out the cost of having the x-rays as an excuse for not having them done. Uh, but I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about patients who irrespective of whether they're free or not just say no I'm, I, I don't want x-rays uh, because on the grounds that they believe that they're dangerous now they're not x-rays dental x-rays are so low and so negligible in dose they're not even included in the medical x-ray count up when they do a count up every year so really and, and on a sunny day like today I'm probably getting one dental x-rays worth of radiation on just on the drive home but people have some funny ideas and they, they say well no because it's an x-ray of your teeth, it's a lot of x-rays concentrated down onto a single spot, you know? Some some old cods that they've heard somewhere. And so you're like, well, again, it's not worth arguing with these people. You can say to them, look, that your x-rays are totally safe, but I respect your, uh, you know, I respect your wishes not to have the x-rays done, but I will, but I'll just make a note in the notes that, you know, um, consent was withheld. And if they're a regular pay, you know, they've been with us a long time, then we won't go to great lengths to chuck them out. But I will make a note, and if they're a new patient and they refuse x-rays, then then I just tell them that I can't work with a patient who uh, refuses x-rays and tries to sort of micromanage their treatment to that extent. Um, anyone who's made a formal complaint about a dentist in the past, I'd be, I'd be disinclined to accept anyone who... Uh, you know, came in and said, "Look, I'm, I'm in the middle of a, I'm in the middle of a dispute with my former dentist um, because, um, and I know that all the consumers associations will say patients shouldn't be penalised for just ex exercising their their consumer rights. You know, it's their right to complain, their right to receive quality work, and and complain about it if it's not up to the standards that they expect, but." Having um, been at the sharp end of one of these complaints now, I can honestly say that uh, the, 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 the sort of the, uh, what's the word, the, the, the conveyor belt that takes people through these complaint system has got nothing at all to do with um, consumer rights or anything. It's just a case of, uh, you know, saying, you, know, you, you could probably get a few thousand quid for that. If you took that through to Dental Law Partnership, they probably get you five, 10,000 quid uh, and then nothing at all so anyone who's really gone you know gone made a complaint I'm not interested in um, anyone who wants an opinion that's a bit more favorable than than another opinion anyone who's got more than one dentist I'm fed out with people saying well can you do the rip filling I'll get my other dentist to do the fillings typically uh, the one they've got me as their private dentist and they've got an NHS dentist and they want to stay on the list of the NHS dentist because they see it as valuable, um, a valuable benefit to be on an NHS dentist list. 
and so they don't want to give it up so they just try and stay on as many lists as they can um, that's everything there's probably a couple more um, anyone who anyone who comes in and says I want um, I've had I've had implants done in Hungary or I've had veneers done in Poland or somewhere and one of them's pinged off or uh, you know my my all on four needs adjustment uh, you know that was done in Romania not interested not interested sorry uh, you know get in touch with the people who, who provided it and find out if they've got a, a UK agent um, and that applies to um, anyone who comes in and says that they've uh, using one of these online tooth whitening uh, people or one of these online uh, white plastic teeth overlay type things and they and they say, oh, I've sent, I've sent off the impressions, and every time I send them back, they they say no, uh, it's it's no use, and they and I have to pay another forty pound for another couple of trays worth of impression material. So I'm like, you know, I, I used to do that for people, but then, but then I had, I had one of my impressions sent back by this crappy white Dracula Fang white tooth people, and I looked at it, and it was perfect. It was perfect. This impression. And the reason they sent it back was it wasn't taken using their impression material because I'd taken it using my professional impression material. And that's when I realised this was just a con. They just pick any excuse to say that the impression's not right so they can get another 40 quid out of these people. So uh, while I sympathise with them and they are being ripped off, then uh, that's just, you know, it's caveat emptor. You have to, when you, when you use these bloody things, you have to realise you're getting ripped off. And lastly, um, anyone who comes in and says they're allergic to the adrenaline in, in uh, dental injections, and you get people who come in and say, they used to say I'm allergic to the adrenaline. They don't do that so much now because I think a lot of them are cottoned on to the fact that you know, the adrenaline is natural, naturally present in their body anyway, so they can't really be allergic to it. Uh, but but they, might, they will say, you know, I, I had a patient in the other day, he said, uh, I had an injection, my heart beat so fast, which is typical. I was thumping so hard, I thought it was going to burst out of my chest, which is typical. But then he said, my dentist said to me, if I hadn't been such a young person, if I'd been 10 years older, that could have killed me. And I'm like, really? What What <laughs> stupid dentist? What stupid brain dead fucking moron dentist said that? You know, so, so they're like, so now I... Uh, Either I don't want any local anaesthetic, or I want all my fillings done without local anaesthetic. Can you do that? No. All right, uh, and I have had, had uh, it won't be a problem because I had a tooth out. Uh, I have had a tooth out without any local anaesthetic. And like, really? Yeah? Well, was it loose? Oh, I can't remember. Really? I think you'd remember. So, anyone who comes in and says, no, I want you to use that adrenaline free anaesthetic on me, the, the um, cytonist with octopressin, we don't even keep it. We would um, we would get it in if we needed to, but but we haven't needed to, and I don't accept that one episode of a in inadvertent intravenous injection that caused uh, palpitations lasting probably five minutes is a um, is an indication for using a non-adrenaline. It's an indication for using an aspirating syringe, but it's not an indication for using. Um, a non-adrenaline anaesthetic because then you can't guarantee the anaesthesia you know I'm sure Cytonest with Dr. Preston is lovely stuff but it's not the stuff I use every day it's not the stuff I'm used to working with and therefore um, under those circumstances we wouldn't be able to help the patient anyway that's my list if you can think of any additions then please do leave in the comments below let me know uh, and uh, if you uh, want to write up your own list, you're welcome to use mine as a starting point. Okay, do it, because I'll tell you, it'll make your life so much easier. You'll be so much happy, so much less stressed. Saying no is, is good, it's good. It's good for you to say no, and it's good for people to hear no. And I just wrote to that woman with the anaesthetic, I just said, look, I'm sorry, um, you know, you, you need a couple of bridges, and I've given you a quote for reference, which you can take... Uh, to, to any dentist to use as a reference because um, you know we wouldn't be able to carry them out here due to your aversion your aversion 
to adrenaline free local anaesthetics fair enough you know very nice about it but you know I'm not I'm not going to um, get involved all right nice to talk to you in the afternoon I'm off I'm, I'm, I could have a beer can't I all right cheerio bye